fishing time again. Oh, it's nice to be out again. The sun's lovely out there, but actually looking at the temperature, it's really cold, only five degrees. So uh, it's all right in the sun, but yeah, typical spring conditions, it's still pretty cold otherwise. But fish have been feeding. There's been plenty of fish out lately. I'm actually heading for the Mets Lake on the Thorny Weir Complex. And uh, yeah, I've done a fair bit over the winter and leading into the spring on the various lakes. I've fished Thorny Weir a couple of times, a few times. Uh, but And a little bit on the Lake 3, which is the little lake where I did the, the little lake campaign last year. And yeah, there was still a little bit of unfinished business on there, which I managed to put right recently. Um, so yeah, probably come to that in a little bit. But um, yeah, at the moment, I'm heading for a couple of days, a couple of nights down on the Metz Lake. And hopefully, fingers crossed, get me first fish from there. There's some lovely scaly fish uh, in the Metz. It's, it's a cracking lake. I mean, it's day ticket, but you wouldn't know it fishing it. It's, it's like a typical syndicate lake, really lovely sort of wild looking lake uh, loads of features loads of islands loads of snags and uh, loads of nice carp so yeah let's hope I get to see at least one of them one or two would be nice but um, yeah it's gonna be nice to get the rods out anyway so uh, yeah I'll catch up with you on the bank Well, there's a few people on here actually, a few more than what I thought, but um, first swim that I sort of fancied is, is already taken, in fact three or four or five swims all in a row, all taken along there. Uh, but this one's free, this was one of the ones I was sort of hoping to fish. It's some nice snags obviously, and uh, they do love getting in there. Fish are in the, the snags at the moment, they're not so much in open water by all accounts. From what it seems they're coming out of the snag so this is a good choice so uh gonna have a quick look but i'll put a bucket in in the swim which is a standard way of uh claiming it so i'm claiming that one but i will have a quick look elsewhere first because there is a few other swims i'd like to have a look at there we go i've got a swim at least it's always worth a little look first because you never know Sometimes you have plans, but then you see a good opportunity somewhere else and those plans change a little bit. Um, which I think is important. It's not always the right way to go in with fixed ideas and plans. Because the fish have other ideas. But anyway, we'll have a little look around. Yeah, maybe you can see all the bivvies down there. Yeah, I don't want to be in amongst loads of people anyway, so yeah, we'll see anyway. I always like to look at this area, it's called the Rat Hole, it swims just down there. It's probably just a bit too cold to spot any fish, which is a shame, but um, certainly one of the areas I always fancy fishing up here. It just always looks good. Long way, right round the other side of the lake. It always looks good. And I did have a walk round last week, I think it was. I did see one fish up here. And that was all. But then I wasn't seeing anything anywhere that day. But there were fish for sure in here. But I don't know, I think I'll probably go with the swim I bucketed. Because um, I'm not seeing much anywhere, you know, it all looks pretty nice and quiet around this side, it looks fishy, but who knows, I don't know. Oh, 
All right, I'm in the back of the swim that I did bucket. So I've got me bucket there and uh, I've just watched a fish come in here. Just, you probably can't see it, I can just see it with my glasses. Just gone right into that corner. Matter of fact, there's two there. Excellent. I've also seen a few little patches of fizz come up. Well, that's it. Swim try sorted. Excellent. Excellent. That's all I needed to see. I just wanted to find some fish. I've been round, well, probably two thirds of the lake, and the swim I put the bucket in. It's the first swim that I've seen fishing. Brilliant, that's great. Right, I'll go and get my gear. And uh, this will be my home for a couple of nights, or at least over the other side of those islands. I mean, they're, they're obviously safe in here, but I can uh, try and entice one or two out. Oh, that's great though, there's fish here. Right. Power loaded. Engine on. Here we go. Old habits die hard and the first job was always to get the rods out before anything else, before setting up cameras. Um, but what I wasn't expecting was to get a run so fast and literally within minutes one of the rods was away. Well, that didn't take long, did it? I literally only just got the rods out, just put the kettle on, heard an alarm. Thought, oh, surely not. But yeah, it is. <laughs> there we go, my first Mets carp. Come from just over on the corner of the island there. How about that, eh? Blimey. Well, didn't expect that. I came on here hoping just to get a carp and I've got one in a few minutes so uh, anything else is a bonus after this blimey what a start right let's get a wade and sorted oh, nice fish actually God, cracker Wow, what is that? That, blimey, that's 30 pound eight, blimey. Well that is a result, I didn't, I thought it was a decent 20. Oh, all right, you rest in there for a minute darling. start to the Mets. <laughs> Came on here. Well, just hoping to catch a fish really. <clears throat> to get one in about 10 minutes and for it to be a 30. Yeah, that's pretty special. So my first mess can't come a little bit quicker than expected, but yeah, I was well happy with that. Got the rod back out, kettle on for a cup of tea, and uh, yeah, time to relax. Or at least I thought, because it wasn't that long before another one went off.
Lovely. That's an absolute cracker. Proper old mixed fish this one. It's lovely on here, you know. Really nice lakes these are. You'd never know they were day ticket lakes actually. They're, they're so quiet and peaceful. And what I said before about Thorny Weir, it's still got that wild feel about it. Even though it's day ticket, it's still got a nice wild feel about it. And that's what I like about this here. And uh, actually I was speaking to Dave Vaughan a couple of weeks ago and he said, you know what Steve, you should have come on the Mets years ago. And he's right. I wish I had really, but you know, at least I've got on here at last now. Um, because it is absolutely lovely, but you know, there's so much fishing to do and so little time to do it, that's always the problem. Of course, you know, I've always had the foreign stuff and the lockdowns meant that I've been able to do some UK stuff for a change. Um, but yeah, I've got way later, you know, I had a little go on Thorny, I, I enjoyed it on Thorny, just across the way there. And, uh, yeah, late for it as well, but in, in the winter um, there was a period when all these were flooded. You couldn't even get on the Mets because it, uh, it was just flooded out. Probably going to get wiped out by a goose in a minute <laughs> if you hit an alarm. Um, yeah, so yeah, I did a few different bits and pieces through sort of January, February, uh, beginning of March. And had a little go on the lizard never been on there before you know but it was always somewhere I sort of had in mind to have a little go um, expecting it to be a lot easier than what it was it was actually quite tricky out of all the waters I fished I expected it to be the easiest and it turned out to be the, the trickiest um, really I, I think a lot of that was just down to the time of year because it's a, a fairly sort of standard nine ten foot all over and they, they weren't really getting down on the bottom they were sort of sit in mid-water a lot of the time you know which was sort of uh, zig territory which I don't do a lot of uh, even though I've caught my best, biggest UK carp on a zig I don't do a lot of it um, but I did on there you know I was fishing with my mate Tom Duncan Dunlop and uh, you know he, he's one of those guys who catches them everywhere he seems to know all methods of carp fishing very well so it was good fishing with him because you know he's, he's sort of quite clued up on the zig front and uh, yeah I, I, one I enjoyed fishing with him um, and two you know not only <laughs> what did I say it's alright that's a duck I'm not going to panic about that <laughs> sorry about that I've got ducks <laughs> right where was I yeah, I was talking about the lizard, wasn't I? Uh, and the zig rigs. On sunny days, they were getting right up near the top, you know, like, I was fishing nine foot zigs in sort of 10 foot of water, and catching them that way, you know, and on the sort of gloomy, sort of cloudy days, they'd be down in six foot, something like that. You know, the nice thing about the lizard was, you see the fish all the time, you know, even in the depths of winter when it was really cold and horrible, you'd see fish, it, sometimes just cruising on the top. Um, or a lot of time they were they were just showing, you know, I had fish showing under my rods, out in front of my rods, all around, you know, all over the place. So um, it was always good in that way, and some of the takes were amazing.
used to get one. Nine foot zig. The warm March sunshine. How about that? Lovely zig spring fully scaled mirror. <laughs> well pleased with that. But yeah, so it was, it was a good bit of fun and then that was sort of while we couldn't fish nights basically so I was just doing the days you know and that was a day ticket fishery perfect for the job as soon as we was able to do the nights again uh, I came straight down um, and went on lake free and really it was more just to get out get under a bivy for a couple of nights somewhere nice and peaceful lake free is perfect for that I've really enjoyed fishing there did a bit on it didn't do a lot on it last year but um, had most of the ones that I wanted to catch in the short time that I did on there. So it was, it was, it was one of those lakes, it just sort of clicked for me as soon as I went on there and started fishing. It just said everything seemed to go right. Um, and the, the big mirror, Birdie's mirror, I, I didn't think I, I'd seen it, I hadn't seen it. Um, and, you know, so I was just hoping for a fish or two. Well, as it happened, you know, I was, I was uh, I'd had a couple of fish already. Um... Um, but I was watching some fish down to my left in a bush uh, and there was about 10 fish in there and there was one that was a bit, well quite a bit bigger than the rest, you know, I'll, I'll put it up around sort of 30 pound, upper 20, sort of 30, um, but I couldn't place which fish it was, I thought it might be uh, the two-tone original that I caught last year at sort of 27, which has been 30 in the past, um, but it, it wasn't two-tone that was the thing so you know couldn't work it out but anyway I had a bait just the other side of the bush there and uh, yeah eventually it went off Ooh. well that was one out of blue midday and uh, I've had one down by the tree where I was seeing fish down there nothing had happened and then out of the blue it's gone off now when I got that fish in uh, I, I didn't realise at first it was the fish that I'd been watching in the tree and I certainly didn't realise what fish it was because in actual fact it turned out to be Birdie's mirror you know this mysterious uh, elusive mirror it had only been caught two times before that fish both times by Birdie in 2017 um, and I think it was 36 and 34 pound well, everyone was expecting that fish to grow on, myself included. You know, I thought, well, if it's there, it's going to be 40 pounds. Um, and it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Well, I never saw a fish that big. So when I got this fish on the bank, I didn't think it was it. It was only when I got home and I was looking at the pictures. And uh, sometimes I'm fairly good at recognising fish, not just by scale patterns, but... Um, just the look of them and I looked at the fish's head and I thought I know that fish where do I know that from um, and then it suddenly clicked and I thought no surely it can't be that fish birdie's fish got his pictures out sure enough birdie's mirror or the virgin and so you know by, by pure chance really I'm, I'm putting myself in that position I've caught the fish uh, that I'd most wanted to catch. I only come back for a couple of nights and caught the fish that I most wanted to catch, probably on, on this whole complex. It's probably the most sought after, talked about fish on the whole of the l complex here at Thorny West. So I was just up the tree watching the fish and my bait was just the other side of the tree. I put it there yesterday. And uh, yeah, just out of the blue, sunny day, just early afternoon, off it's gone. Little scopic squid pop up. 
That's a lovely chunk of a fish. Very pleased with that one. That, that was an amazing moment. I was so pleased to get that fish. But that, of course, meant that my fishing was done on there. Uh, I'd only, only done, I think, nine nights and uh, caught all the ones that I wanted to catch. Um, so it was time to move on and, and it was time to actually come on here at last, get onto the nets. And, yeah, like Dave Vaughan said, I should have done it years ago. It's absolutely lovely on here. And the fish are absolutely stunning. They are amazing looking fish. So there we go, you know. Sometimes it takes a bit longer than it should, but at least I got here in the end. I'm here now. That's a beaut. God, that is a cracker. Oh yeah, lovely, lovely. Oh, another absolute peach. It was quite through the night, cold night, but uh, I stuck a fresh bait on this morning, put it back out and it weren't out there long. Not quite as big as the others, 28-12, but probably the prettiest, definitely the prettiest, These Mets carp are absolute stunners, aren't they? Look at that, what a fish. <sighs> Not been here 24 hours yet, and uh, three good fish, so I'm well happy with that. Oh, well, it's turning out to be a good session, this. <laughs> I was hoping to get a fish or two, and uh, yeah, I've had a bit of action now. Um, but yeah, before I sling this one back out, I'll just go through what I'm doing here, really. Uh, Rig-wise, it's pretty much the same as what I've been doing recently for UK. Hinge rig with a pop-up, helicopter rig, um, 20 pound bullet mono. Now, there's a lot of snags in this corner, so uh, yeah, no prizes for guessing where all the carp want to be course they want to be in the snags so you know you have to fish sort of strong and you have to fish sensibly so yeah difference normally I'd have my rod tips up in the air and I've explained what I do that for letting fish go underneath and when I'm playing them etc etc but this time I've got to be locked up you know that's the only way to fish over to snags is to fish locked up you still get a bit of stretching mono anyway um, but you know, sometimes that helps, it's a bit of a shock absorber. But you know, I can't have me rod tips up in the air, they'll just <laughs> end up like javelins going out in the lake, I should think. So, uh, yeah, I've got them fairly level, butt grips at the back, and when that goes in, that, that locks the rod in nice and tight. So, literally, that's not going anywhere. So, it's a nice solid setup, and not fishing far 20 30 yards. 
across the snags but at least when I get one it stops them in their tracks and uh, that's the reason also 20 pound bullet mono nice strong line you've got to use the gear that's going to get them in and stop them in their tracks uh, and this setup and that gears you know doing it fine so uh, yeah that's basically it so right without further ado get this one back out and uh, yeah catch a few more hopefully Early the next morning I was woken up by a savage take on one of my other rods that had yet to produce anything. It's often the case that most of the action come from one area or on one rod uh, and when one of the other rods does produce it turns out to be the biggest fish. And that's exactly what happened here. Uh, it was not only the biggest fish of the session, it turned out to be the biggest fish in the lake. One called Pablo at just under £40. Um, well, what a result that was. never put this rod out yesterday. Couldn't work out what to do with it but I was sure those fish were coming in along that far margin so that was their like, route in and out of the bay so I found a little gap in the bushes and uh, that was the one that produced this. Fantastic. So I'm well happy with that would be an understatement. That's brilliant.
Oh, well, what a 48 hours that's been. Topped, obviously, by that, that big one. But, um, you know, they've all been more than welcome. <laughs> Never make it easy, do they? There we go, one last one to finish up with. 24 and a half pound, another cracking mix car. Oh, absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? Cracking fish. I mean, this whole complex here is fantastic. You know, they do a brilliant job here. Love these lakes. Many thanks to Dave Vaughan and the guys. And uh, oh, there we go. Let's get this one back. Uh, pack up and go home and uh, relax in front of the telly with a cup of tea, I think. <laughs> there we go. Thanks for watching. See you later. See you next time.